welcome to episode one. Thanks for tuning in to my new YouTube channel. Uh, the goal here is to just document my improvements uh, in this amazing game of Star Wars CCG. I used to play it back when I was a teenager and I rediscovered it about three years ago and it's an awesome game and it just needs more people to know about it. So this series hopefully is going to promote it uh, and help just to get the word out and to encourage people to come back to it or to start playing uh, anew. So yeah, so I'm going to be documenting um, my improvements over the last couple of years. I've obviously had to come to grips with new cards, new V cards, the shields, um, just general gameplay. I was super rusty, not that I was any good when I was a teenager, but um, yeah, definitely need to blow off the cobwebs. So it's taken me a good while to get up to speed again and with the new sets that continually come out thanks to the players committee um, you know the game's always evolving always changing it uh, definitely sort of makes it fun uh, and enjoyable to play so so again it's an awesome game and if you love Star Wars you will absolutely love uh, playing this Star Wars CCG just one fact that really makes it stand out I think above all of the card games and why it must be good is because around about 20 if not just over 20 years ago the cipher lost the license and the game went out of print and today you know 20 years plus later it's got a thriving community um, it's got regular videos being posted on Twitch and YouTube from ones like the players committee um, Joe Olson, the current world champion, also known as a rebel spy, and a few others um, that you can find if you go to the Players Committee forums and webpage. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can find those things out for yourself as well. The forum is always active with loads of discussions, not only about um, decks and cards and things, but just general things that are happening in the community, uh, perhaps tournaments, events that are coming up, and also the, the Hollow Theatre, which is their main YouTube channel, um, just highlights something fun every week. Uh, it's a really good show to, to watch. So a big shout out to Dan, who hosts that show, and really, mainly because of that show, it's inspired me to do, to do this series and to do my own. So thanks for joining in. And this is episode one. So the Naboo League, uh, that's the UK basis uh, for players here in the UK that play. We had roughly uh, 10 to 15 that played in it in 2021. The event uh, lasted almost the entire year. Um, sadly, we didn't actually get to play our very last game so we still haven't got a champion at the moment, um, but as soon as, as soon as that happens and we get the results, I will probably do another quick video um, just to congratulate the winner. And I would also love, if possible, to get an interview with them and also with Paul McPherson. Just want to give a big shout out to Paul, who has run the event. Um, you know, he does a great job every week putting up the results, the schedule. Uh, coming up with the different types of event we had, um, we had five in total. Um, it was bookended by Premier through Death Star 2. We had a Jawa event and then two Opens. So it made it really interesting throughout the year, you know, trying to uh, get to grips with playing Premier through Death Star 2 again um, was <laughs> quite interesting, a bit of a learning curve. Um, because I've just spent, like I said, the last couple of years getting to grips with the V cards and the open format. Uh, the games were, were enjoyable, but I definitely think the games improved um, a tremendous amount. Thanks to things like the um, defensive shields. I know some people don't like them at all, but I have really come to value them. Um, mainly for the retrieval aspect. <clears throat> you know, being able to just retrieve quite a lot of force without having to actually have any characters on the table, without having to pay um, and with no sort of repercussions. I think 
has definitely made the game a lot more interesting now and made it a lot better uh, as from a playing perspective. Um, the Jower event was also interesting because it cut out the sort of top tier, um, two or three from each side um, decks and that was interesting as well to build a deck. Um, you get used to playing I think the same set of cards, the same um, characters or just deck archetype uh, so that was fun. It was also interesting to see what other people were playing. Um, one that I got absolutely destroyed by like fourth turn, third turn um, was against Justin Branch aka Silverglen who was playing a um, this deal objective but with the city, I want to say the city outskirts or the the city something site that lets your aliens deploy cheap and it boosts their power and their forfeit I think and I just didn't know what to do. I was playing hidden base mains and I went down with like Luke sort of turn two uh, thinking he was fine and just got absolutely blown out. Um, he had occupation turn two, uh, he had a admiral's order I think that lets your um, non-pilot warriors deploy minus one and he put like four or five aliens down sort of all in one turn and just yeah I didn't have a gick and that was kind of it for me really so yeah it was fun just to play against the deck that I didn't know what to do against um, probably still don't very well because I haven't played it since um, but that's how you learn in this game is playing things that are unexpected um, and then trying to maybe copy the decks uh, and get a feel for how the, how they work so you can try and beat them in future matches which nicely sort of leads me into the open format. Uh, for the open, um, I it was my best sort of rounds um, of games, especially for Dark Side. I won all three of my games, one of which uh, I want to show and do a quick review of in a minute. Um, but it was using Joe Olson's Bring Him Before Me from Worlds and I just think it's just a really easy deck, simple to play, you just, you know, kind of like hunt down, you just put Invader out and um, yeah, just put Vader out, do some drains, using Maul to battle, um, adding Battle Destinies with the Emperor's power, very straightforward, very simple uh, and very enjoyable and I was you know, glad to get some wins in. So, uh, the second open should have been, I can't remember if it's nationals or regionals for the UK, um, was held at the start of December. And it was something I was, I had planned to go to, and then last minute something happened and I couldn't make it. So I was, you know, I was absolutely gutted because playing on Jemp is brilliant. And just to be able to play this game whenever you want pretty much um, is awesome but it's not like sitting down across the table from, from someone um, especially friends and having a laugh um, and talking Star Wars at the same time so hopefully 2022 I know Paul is doing a second or another league and hopefully there'll be some live play in that or just some live games uh, in general if we can get a hold of get a bit more of a grip on what's going on with the whole COVID situation. It's really put a, a bummer on Star Wars, hasn't it, this, this last couple of years. So, so we're excited for 2022. Um, and yeah, just can't wait to get back in, doing some in, in-person in play. Anyway, that's enough waffling for now. Um, like I say, thanks for joining me. I'm just going to show you a quick review uh, of one of my games that I just really enjoy playing.
Okay, so you can see here, um, I'm playing Bringing Before Me. Uh, this was the deck that uh, Joe Olson played at Worlds last year. And also, I think Hayes Hunter was another player who played it. Um, there were some slight variations with them, and I think I preferred um, Joe's. Although I think one change I think I did make that I saw with... Um, Mr. Hunter's was that he had Erica V um, in his deck, which I thought was quite good in case you come up against um, Legend, which was big big deck at the time, and you know you can just chuck her out and retrieve four. So uh, apart from that, I think everything else was the same. Um, so open in hand, I was super super happy with this hand. Um, had the bridge straight away, which is always nice. Um, no having to dig for it, no playing an interrupt and finding it's in your force pile, that's super annoying. Um, also, you know, Vader, first turn Vader is always good I think in this build, this deck. Um, and then just a couple of other nice cards. Imperial Command, um, again using Joe Olson's deck um, play a couple of generals. I was happy to get force push. Always great for digging cards out, and also the point man. Um, playing OA and I can't remember the no idea um, interrupt. I've been sort of caught off guard or caught out quite a few times with people playing. Keep your eyes open. Um, so through experience uh, and just seeing other people's games, I realised Point Man, against those decks, it's not there to dig out stuff during the draw phase, it's really to cancel, keep your eyes open. So, you know, I was really happy with my starting hand and then also my activation. Kev gave me two icons. Um, I get six of my own, uh, two of the two sites, one for security precautions, one for myself and then one each from Kev's site. So, 8 Force with the Emperor, I was going to say re Reborn, but I think it's Returned. Um, you can deploy from Reserve Deck for 2 Force. So, um, yeah, I was like just super happy with this start. Uh, just a quick thing about my opponent, Huge, uh, aka Kevin Yap, for those who don't know. He's on Team Wales, and he's also one of the guys responsible for like the amazing foils and price support and AIs um, that we're able to get uh, for this game. So, you know, Kev's a great guy. Uh, I knew Kev when I first started playing over 20 years ago when I was just like 12 or 13. Um, so it was cool to re reconnect with him a couple of years ago at the uh, just a local event that we had prior to COVID, um, and also at that event, Kev played away, and I was playing like a CCT mains, because it was just something I could uh, build with what I had lying around at home still, and yeah, he just absolutely walked all over me. Um, I'd only been back to the game about six months when I went to that event, so I wasn't expecting, um, you know, any good, <laughs> good, good, good games or anything, um, but yeah, I feel like you know, a year down the road, I was hoping to give him a better run for his money with this game. So let's get on with it, shall we? So grab Emperor's Power. Kev played a leadership, which you know, in a deck that wants to draw multiple battle destinies. Um, I was thinking he's probably playing at least two, if not three, of those, so I just grabbed it straight away. Um, I didn't want him to cycle it, and I couldn't think of many other interrupts that he would play that would be, you know, frustrating. Um, so yeah, so I think having a grabber as one of his starting effects is nice. It's not always possible, but I think in this deck, I know some people I've seen play the wipe them out effect which I think is good 
and it's got synergy with the Emperor because you activate force and then draw it into your hand. Um, it's also extra activation, but I just I like the grabber, um, and if you need to, it's a retrieval of a starship, and I've got two Sith infiltrators in here, more Sith infiltrators. So. Um, in practice games with this deck, I did use that once or twice where you retrieve Mulsive Infiltrator as a six, you know, sort of near end of the game, and then you can track that six for some sort of destiny. So, uh, so yeah, so my starting first turn Emperor Vader, Vader gets his saber, and I'm pretty happy with this. <clears throat> Kev's first turn, obviously, is the usual for OA. He gets out General Karazian. Um, he used Strike Planning to get General Leia as well. So he's going to do the, the old swap using the Brave Resistance. <clears throat> Karazian. That's it, Akbar. This kind of made me question whether to even try to go to space. Um, I cancelled Radis's text just in case he wanted to get out the Corvette or the Hammerhead one. Um, don't actually think he plays either of them. Um, but yeah, going to space, I was thinking I've tried it before and some people I've seen, or they've played Punch It with Carizian Pilot and the Falcon. You get two, adds two Battle Destinies, I think, or adds a Battle Destiny, and makes the Falcon immune to attrition. So, you know, he's already power six. Then he gets two Battle Destinies. He's got Akbar. If he does want to play the, the leadership, to add another Destiny. Um, and yeah, because I only play Mulsif Infiltrator, I just. Wasn't 100% sure whether space was even going to be an option for me. Um, for battling at least. Um, and there is a possibility obviously go into space and just keep cloaking. Um, but in this game, I don't think I went to space at all. <clears throat> yeah, so I always, I like to grab It's a Hit. Um... That was pretty much the only other card I had in mind to grab with my grabber. Because um, like see, I just paid 3 force, and he just cancelled it with a used interrupt. So if I hadn't grabbed it and he had, you know, could cycle it, that's quite a few force he could save. Um, or a few damage that, you know, he could negate for for nothing. So definitely like to grab, grab that. <clears throat> Also, uh, shout out to Kev. We laughed about this during our game, but he is the mastermind behind this Vader, uh, the Emperor's Enforcer, with his text to cancel um, people's game texts, and also the fact that he's immune to, um, sorry about the mess, clash, and attrition less than six. So he's a bit of a beast, this Vader. He's definitely. He's a challenge to shift, for sure. Okay, so combined fleet um, action attack. Something, I always forget the name of that one. Um, allows him to deploy a vehicle. And the secondary text is, at sites related to systems you occupy, opponent can, can only draw one battle destiny. Uh, and this was something I'd seen watching... Um, the videos of Worlds from the PC and also Joelson discussing it that you know stopping you from drawing two battle destiny is a pain because that's kind of what you want to do you will put one guy down draw two battle destiny um, and just clear a sight and lose your due probably um, so the commands are in there for Grand Admiral Thrawn V because um, A 
he's awesome. He's an admiral, so if you do put him with Maul and his Sith Infiltrator, you can add a destiny with command, or you can limit your opponent. But when he's at a ground site, he acts as a general, so you can do the same again. And also, he suspends um, Admiral's orders, so he gets me around the combine, combined fleet. Uh, and yeah, again, I was, I think I just really got lucky with these draws. You know, I had decent hands straight away, and the cards that I drew on my next turn, Tarkin, um, Grand Admiral Thrawn, and I force pushed force pushed for the Night Sister. Because I was thinking, characters with Billy Greer than three, he's not going to have many. Um, and yeah, this is a perfect example. You know, I'm getting a Destiny for Attrition. Tarkin adds a Destiny because he's with Thrawn. And then I lose a Force and add another Destiny with the Emperor's Power. Kev's obviously getting two because Poe's piloting, but they're just going to be reduced to zero. Annoyingly, I thought doing the Sith Fury there to get Fall On would be handy because I could put Fall On down and then start putting to back the like the Phantom Menace and more Sith Infiltrator. Um, but I proper whiffed on these destinies because, as you can see, I drew a one. Tarkin thankfully cancelled it, and then I drew another one. Um, so I would have had three one one so far and then another one so a three and a three ones um, and I think this next one is a decent one that makes up for it slightly let's see a five but Kev using the objective reduces it to three so total battle destiny is five which is great because it cracks um, the immunity of Dash, who obviously makes it immune less than 5, so if I'd have drawn less than 5, that would have been a pain, because he could have kept Poe. Um, but yeah, and then Night Sister just says, no destiny, your destiny's a zero. Um, so it's cool, I get a card for Insignificant Rebellion for winning the battle. And he's got five attrition, so he's got to lose Poe in this battle. And also, I clocked there that he lost a Keep Your Eyes open from the top of his reserve deck. So definitely keeping hold of the Point Man now, because I'm thinking, you know, he's going to use the swap text of a Brave Resistance, get Solo out, and then if he needs to, or he, you know, wants to, he can Solo the. Um, Keep your eyes open, so I was happy to, to see that go. Uh, I think I keep Fall On in my hand for a little while. Um, I've debated whether to take him out of the deck because I always find he only deploys for three force. Um, more times than not, I find I end up wanting to spend the force on like a decent character like Maul, Vader, um, Dooku. Uh, Sidious is in the deck, although it, with the persona change, you can't play him now. Um, but yeah, I was finding you know, deploying one of those kind of guys, battling, and then wanting to draw a few cards to keep your hand size at a decent amount. Um, I tend to not deploy for long. Um, really can't decide on that one. But yeah, so you see, Kev's turn, got layer out, deployed solo, which is what I was expecting. And then moves away from my uh, stack, so. My hand's a little bit sort of depleted, I guess, now. Um, but, again, you know, I think there's at least two, there might be three commands in this build, but yeah, so General Pride is the other guy that I pull with it. 
just because he's cool, adds a destiny against a resistance character. Um, so even just by himself, you know, you drop him to a resistance character, you get in a destiny, and then use Emperor's power, you get two destiny. Um, being a general, you can use the commands with him on the ground, and he also bumps up the attrition um, for the Emperor being on table as well. So just a solid guy. Deploys three, forfeits five. So yeah. Probably should have led with pride because he knew I had him in my hand. Um, obviously, the Phantom Menace is not going to do anything. Um, sort of two more because Kev's not going to have any Jedi in his deck. But I do play the Nuke Gunnery V. So if I could have deployed him uh, that turn as well, that would have been epic to add another Battle Destiny. But there we go. It just has to be more. And. And pride. So we see Kev uses uh, Keep Your Eyes Open, I made him pay a force, I grabbed it, and then I cancelled it. And um, I always feel like that's one of those sweet moments when you grab someone's interrupt and then you cancel it, uh, especially when it's a non unique one like a barrier or something. Um, yeah, just. Even when my opponent does that kind of thing to me, I think, you know, kudos, well done. So Moore gets to swing and takes out Leia. Definitely with a 5 and a 7, although he plays Handle and cancels the 7, which is disappointing. Um, because obviously Leia, she's 4 for 8. Dash in Rogue 12 is forfeit 5, I think, so I needed pretty decent destinies, and with Kev's objective, he can reduce mine by 2. Thankfully, Maul adds 1 to each. So that's a 6. Kev makes it 4. Another six. That's the other thing I like about this deck. Once you've got, you know, a handful of characters out, like I have now, um, the majority of the destinies in the deck are, you know, four, five, sixes, and sevens. Um, which, if you can get four of them out, obviously that's really handy because you just keep cycling back those high destinies. Um, yeah, and this was um, another very lucky for me, very unlucky for Kev. He plays Levitation to get Santeca into his hand, and then he draws a Chewie, and I dark timed it to reduce it by one, so I didn't even have to lose any of my characters. Um, so yeah, so he's down 26 to 10. I get another card on Insignificant for winning that battle. And then he's got 15, uh, 15 attrition, 16 battle damage, I think it was. So, pretty much cleared the entire site. And a force. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm like really happy with the board. I know I'm having to pay to drain, but. Now I've got two drains of three and a drain of two, and he can't cancel them because they're his locations. He is draining me for two at Jakku, um, and two at the Endor site. But, yeah, he's got a five card hand, and... I think, yeah, I was debating whether to pitch both starships here, or whether to keep them. Um, <laughs> this is where my um, Star Wars skills and knowing the rules need to work. 
um, because I wasn't sure if you could deploy a starship to an exterior planet site. So I was debating if you could deploy it to where more was, he could get in and then fly up, but that's not possible. Uh, so I probably would have pitched the other um, infiltrator at that point. But anyway, uh, yeah, so he comes down, Sansaka, Anakin, and I draw Sidious, which, like I say, you can't play him anymore. The Persona rules Sidious and the Emperor are considered the same person. Obviously they are in the film, so I think it makes sense. Um, just need to find another decent character to play in because Sidious is pretty cool being able to, ex if he's on his own, uh, being able to exclude a character of ability less than six. Um, so basically, unless they're a Jedi, you know, he's pretty solid. Immune to attrition, technically gets two battle destiny, so. So yeah, so I decided I'm going to try and get rid of Mr. Solo. Um, Sidious, P-59, I think I'm looking pretty good. Uh, you know, thinking my destiny is going to be pretty solid in the deck. And then he reacts with Finn, which I should have known he had Finn in his hand. Um, P-59 takes a shot. Solo and whiffs, which was really annoying um, because I was actually contemplating if I'd have hit Solo um, that I was going to not draw Battle Destiny and leave Finn to potentially come back down and beat next turn or at least force him to have to reinforce that site. Um, and, I'm also, and then I can also battle uh, with Tarkin and his crew and draw another three battle destinies so um, frustratingly we both uh, have the same amount of, of power so I don't get a, a card for winning the battle but both my characters are immune to his three so I was quite happy with that um, again if I had a shot solo I mean, that would have been amazing, have both characters still sat there with Finn on his own, so. Uh, so yeah, battle over here. I'm getting two battle destinies. He reduces the first one. Um, annoyingly, I didn't have enough destinies. I could have talked cancelled that one and drawn another one, but I only had two left, so. Six is good enough. It's either Anakin or both. And he draws a three. So Night Sister's done his job. Um, I was also trying to think at this point what characters um, he would have left. I saw him obviously draw the Padme before. Um, don't ever think Ray hit the table um, in this game. Um, I was thinking maybe Wedge. Uh, but yeah, he's already lost a few guys. I know he retrieved Poe, so he's rattling around somewhere still. Um, but apart from mains who are going to clear any of my guys, you know, I'm feeling pretty confident, even though he's got quite a lead on force. Uh, he's 22, 22 in force and 4 in hand. I'm down to 16 in life force, 6 in hand. So we got Saw Guerrero. And then yeah, I play Dark Time, another great card against OA because you can use it so that Battle Destinies can't be modified. So whatever I draw is going to stick. Um, annoyingly, he drew <laughs> the one, which I could have made a zero and kept my, both my guys alive. But, you know, it's 
just how this game goes. And then yeah, I know that I've got a 4 and a 4 on top. I think that's why I played the Dark Time, because I was thinking if he knows I've obviously got 8, he's going to reduce it to 6 and then just lose Saw Gerrera. Um, and he's still going to have Law Santeca sat around maybe. But anyway, I win a battle, get another card. And then yeah, Ron I feel like has done his job now. Um, plus, I think I was debating whether to move uh, Tarkin and Vader together and then move Maul and um, Pride out to another location, which is why I pitched Thrawn. And then yeah, just drawing a few cards. Okay, just drawing cards. Also, I kept hold of that force field for a little while because I saw the ray um, with lightsaber. So you know, I didn't want to get caught out. Although I do have a Vader and another Maul in my hand, so. Wasn't too bothered. <laughs> I thought it was interesting that Kev lost the keep your eyes open from hand um, to that drain, and then we see the rake off the top from the reserve deck, um, mainly because I'm going to obviously try and shoot solo with P fifty nine. Which, you know, he could subtract two from with his objective. Um, if I do shoot him, you know, he's losing two force, so why not save it and stop me firing altogether? Um, but yeah, so anyway, just got a handful of dudes, a couple of red cards. And then we get another reacting fin. Um, yeah, probably the the one card I never got hold of that would have come in handy would be the the Lana Dobri combo to cancel that. But hey ho. So P fifty nine misses shooting solo again. And then I draw the four. But yeah, so solo was the dude in this game. I couldn't shift him at all. Um and then Kev gets a three. Jedi Lev's it again. I suppose Jedi Lev was the other card to grab maybe, but I think leadership and the uh, it's a hit are definitely the better ones. And then knowingly he drew a four, so I had to lose um, P59 at this point. I won the battle though, so I get another card. I think this game is one where I got the most amount of cards um, on Insignificant Rebellion, which was personal best, the card stacked. <clears throat> so I'm definitely feeling in the driving seat in this you know, position now, he's got 10 in life force, he activates all of it, so I know we're not battling. Um, I moved Tarkin over, just to be on the safe side, just in case he did drop like a, a ray and someone maybe. Um, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, but I just didn't want to chance it, so um, being able to drain for 3 and 3 
is fine, especially when I'm down to 15 force. Anyhow, we get is it UO? Add more UO to Tora um, and Chewy. <clears throat> A quick check on my destinies, I got four and a two. So it's one of those if I draw oh, if I, one, it's been a long day. Um yeah, obviously I'm planning on attacking Zolo. I'm thinking I could draw the two and he makes it a zero. Um or I draw the four and he makes it a two, so Activate one extra force, and we'll just see what's left. Uh, he's got ultimatum now at this point, three battlegrounds, so I'm just training for two and two. It's kind of one of those decisions with six force left. You know, I could have put Dooku down, I guess, but He's potentially going to get shot by Chewy, um, and it's not going to really change the amount of force each other has. So I felt like it was safer to just force drain and then drop these guys down and battle solo. And thankfully, I did draw the four, um, so I got nine, and then Kev draws. A four. So lucky just just about won that battle, get another card. Uh, when when the games go like this and you're able to win battles and you get cards stacked, it is awesome and it's like you know I've taken off one, two, three, four, five, six, six cards that you know he can't retrieve or get back. Um, there is an interrupt that lets you take cards off. Oh, sorry. Um, but I don't think it's any good, really. No one ever plays it. It's got a cool image, though. I think it's the one with Obi Wan sat on the the log as the apparition um, when he's talking to Luke in Return of the Jedi. So. So yeah, so finally cleared Solo, down to the last turn or two now, um, he's joining me for two and two, he doesn't have to pay for it, which is always nice. Um, and you get Beaumont Ken, <laughs> and then I think this is where the game might die for us because... <laughs> He does the thing that I always do, which is deploying projection on the side sort of table instead of putting it on a location. Um, and he asks for a revert, and for some reason, the revert seems to kill the replay. Um, but yeah, you can see uh, the state of the board here. I've got, you know, next turn I'm going to drain for three, three, and two. So we've got three, six, seven, eight. Kev's only got three force left, so um, I'm not even sure if after the revert he just quit or conceded instead of letting me drain him out. Um, but yeah, that was just it was just an epic game. Um, really enjoyed playing it with Kev, and you know a huge milestone for myself. Thinking you know I beat Kev finally. Uh, he probably will wipe the floor with me <laughs> next time I, I meet him again. Um, but yeah, just really fun game. Love this deck. Uh, obviously it needs some tweaks, like taking Sidious out uh, for a new character and potentially taking out Fall On. Yeah, just I like this, this deck. It's very simple. Deploy characters, battle, draw destinies. Um, so thanks. To Joelson.
for playing at Worlds and for doing the review on it and just talking about different games and the the strategies that make it work um, against a deck like OA. So thanks everyone for watching. I uh, really enjoyed doing this. Hopefully I'll do one each week. And until then, may the force be with you. Take care. playing.